I'm actually in the process of creating my own um superhero story, actually, Corbin. I'll show you. Give you a little. I actually scripted my entire first comic last night <laughs> around. <laughs> I went to see 3M, but I finished scripting it. Let me show you. So, name of it, concept name, is called. Is, this is like. Is it this one? Yeah, this is like a 144 page word document thingy of my entire series. But. The name of it is called. Um, it's called Adonai's Arsenal. And it is taken. Is taken. The. Well, taking Hebrew words linked to God's character and turning them into superheroes. But more so from the perspective of centering it in according to. Um, based on spiritual warfare. So not like all the Remnant and Black Blossom and the comics I cover are like um, superheroes set within the physical realm, Christian heroes set within the physical realm, my heroes, and they mainly operate in the. Um, spiritual realm like a spiritual strike team in essence that's what i see um perspective to it. and i have my six main characters a base off of six hebrew six well i like four base off of hebrew words linked to god's character one is based off of a greek word well greek letter omega and one is based off of a hebrew word a hebrew name that is linked to god I have my whole. I can just. I don't. I don't have a way to contact you, so I could actually send it to you. But I did this presentation. I don't know if you're in our Discord server. If you pass through our Discord server, I don't know if you have Discord or not. But in the explanations Discord, got folks sharing their um their series, their series and stuff, and uh, you could find mine and check out what it's about in um in this section so this is the this is the um the logo concept the logo for the series Adonized arsenal and this is can i open this one i open this one this is actually one of the um concept art for the character Omega. I don't draw. I have a, a commissioner artist online. But it's all about taking names of God and like turning them into like um, superheroes. So I could show you an example of one. I'll show you an example of one is Kodosh. Kodosh is based off of the Hebrew words Kodosh. Transliterations. K instead of a Q. Based off of the Hebrew word Kodosh and the Hebrew word Kodosh, which is the which means holy, and he is the leader of the group, and his super he wields everybody has like a signature spiritual weapon of warfare, so his is hammer of war, inspired by Jeremiah twenty nine and Jeremiah twenty three verse twenty nine and Jeremiah fifty one verse um, one, where it's like, is my word not like a hammer? I think 51 verse 20, 51 20 says, is my word not like a hammer with the power to break? Uh, I've, you know me, I like to make sure I have the right scripture. I'm going to reference in scripture. So 51 20 says, Yeah, my 51 20 says, yeah, you are my battle axe and sword, says the Lord. Some versions say you are my hammer, you are my hammer of um, war. Different versions, say, different versions say meaning. Let me do ESV because I see my main reference version. Fifty was twenty. Fifty was twenty. So 51 verse 20 says, um, 
51 verse 20, you are my hammer of war. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. With you I break in pieces the horse and the riders. With you I break in pieces the chariot and the charioter. With you I break in pieces man and woman. With you I break in pieces old and the youth. With you I break in pieces young men and young women. And the context of this is referring to um referring to Jeremiah in the time of Israel with the prophecies that he was just laying down from his side and the people was like not listening to him they was calling into repentance and they just people back then just wasn't listening and then with jeremiah 23 verse 29 is 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 my wood not like uh, is my wood not like fire declares the lord and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces so from that i took that verse and translated into a weapon fictional weapon for hammer of war and the abilities with it would be like um this weapon from destiny and i just have like a lot of references so and i like play the game destiny a lot so like the burning mall from that it does just like proof of concepts and then kardash's ability his main gift like because each one of them have a, a calling it a spiritual gift but it's not the same context as spiritual gifts in um in i don't know in like real world context but in my thing is called spiritual gifts think of it like how marvel has mutants and mutants have mutant abilities and i don't know arsenal they have a uh, spiritual gifts but kadosh is spiritual gift um let's see if i can put it up because i do have right yeah so i have a whole presentation pitch deck if if there's a way if you email me for when i could i don't mind sending you the um the links to the um presentation slide version of the character breakdowns that i sent to my artist so you could check it out because i do respect your opinion and what you um what you say throughout the um any comments and stuff that so is have like a bunch of example gifts of like what he would do could do in the series and then his spiritual gift is based off of a scripture that I personally apply to, I personally apply to um, my life, which is um, like, it's a scripture about God supernaturally giving, giving the what the men who built the tabernacle and stuff in the time of Moses, God supernaturally gave them that ability to work in unison and build everything, because like according to the direct minutia precise instructions so with that i translated it into ability into his main gift which is um which is like just spurge idea is ability intelligence knowledge and unity <laughs> and i just went into depth on that scripture based off of exodus 3 verse 1 to 11 and christian commentary sources state that god supernaturally enabled beziel to do the work of building the tabernacle God saw this work as just God saw this work just as spiritual as and as dependent on the Holy Spirit's power as the work of Moses and the work Moses and Aaron did. This divine empowerment wasn't restricted only to Bezalel. God wanted every worker's labor to be blessed and promoted by the Holy Spirit. Yet they were filled yet they were filled with the Holy Spirit not to work unto themselves but unto the Lord. God's empowerment isn't to be used for our own selfish ends. And I have a personal application for this was like when I first, um, when I was 17, 17, 2018. Yeah, when I was 17, finishing high school, I was like, I wanted to do Christian esports. Christian esports and um, I wanted to do, well, make a Christian esports and gaming content creation organization. And I literally prayed, like, prayed a prayer with my mom. I went on a fast, like, God, you are the creator of all things on earth like wood food so i pray that as you lead my life you would give me the knowledge to understand and master adobe premiere pro photoshop after effects video editing gaming computer programming networking esports social media marketing and everything on the earth that i pursue that everything i shall do with excellence onto you now at the time my family was in like heavy era like name it and claim it god said ritual like fasting ritualistically fasting for this fasting for that They're like we would we were just in heavy you're just in heavy nonsense <laughs> heavy nonsense and heavy error but i believe for like where my life is now 
I mean, like, took it from a 1490 computer that God lined up for me to be in this position, like, pulled me out of what I, everything that I pray and ask God for back then when I was 17, 99.99% of those things did not come to pass and failed utterly. They failed astronomically. But the 0.1% that was God's will is what I am living now, and it is like the best reality. The best reality I could have ever like. I didn't even ask for I didn't even know how to ask for what I do what I do now. I had no desire to do back then to I had the desire to do it, but it was like one of the it was on that list of like nah things that I definitely would not achieve. But I do now with the explanations YouTube channel and um just like game development and stuff. I wanted to be big I wanted to like grow a big following playing the big uh, video games and video game playthroughs and getting flown out to go and play video games rather than actually sitting down here on a three hour live stream making video games. And I apply that scripture to be Kadosh's main um superpower on he is gifted with divine knowledge, divine intelligence and empowerment. And I don't know if you know, I'm a big X Men fan. So I use it as a point of reference but not as the source of inspiration if that makes sense so x-men isn't my source of inspiration for any of my abilities or when i use gifts standing they aren't my um source of inspiration is a point of reference so i could give so people could like draw the comparison to something they may be familiar with thanks man <laughs> that's awesome so like empowerment as the christian commentary source this divine empowering wasn't restricted only to beziel god wanted every worker's labor to be blessed and prompted by the holy spirit yet they were filled been looking for a bit of over an hour and a half that was from Jaden. <laughs> Dude, thanks for passing through Jaden and looking So it says, as the Christian commentary so stated, the divine empowering wasn't restricted only to Bezalel. God wanted every worker's labor to be blessed and prompted by the Holy Spirit. Yet they were, yet they were filled with the Holy Spirit, not to work unto themselves, but unto the Lord. God's empowering isn't to be used for our selfish ends, and that is the same thing with Kadosh. Kadosh doesn't have—he's the leader of the group, but he isn't like, or even on like, because. With this story, it is balanced in a way where nobody is more powerful than the other. Pulling from that scripture on where the disciples ask Jesus, who is the greatest of us all? And who's the greatest disciple? And Jesus hit them with like, hey, pat down with that. They'd have no who greater than who. All of you are equal across the board, serving God's kingdom. Full stop. And then we, I think that's where it went into who takes care of the um, least of these. So with Kadosh, even Kadosh, even though he's the leader of the group, he is like only if I was in like an actual like power spectrum ranking power to power, he is the least powerful. In the, the context of like he can't just go down and like tear down a stronghold or something like somebody else. However, he is the most powerful when it comes to teamwork. Because Kadosh is like he empowers the others to where they when he's a wrong or something, when he's a wrong, like this comic panel, this is like Jean, Jean Grey. Let me show you an example. This is an example of how it works in like with X Men and Mutants. Yeah. So Jean Grey is a telepath, but she has the power to amplify other people's powers. So you see here with Cyclops, beam is like small, but when she extends it, his beam is like it's huge. Same thing with um with Angel in this in particular X Men comic. He can pierce through the... Yeah, he's the area buff. Yeah, he's the buff. He can pierce through the shield, but when, when she empowers him, he um just, like, blasts through it. And it's the same thing with um with this X-Men... This X-Men clip. This is, like, one of my favorite X-Men. I think I might have to mute it, because it might um trigger YouTube copy. But this is, like, an example. This is a proof of concept. Not an inspiration point, but just a proof of concept for the... um. Proof of concept for how is power to like just explain it in a clip. Remember, the point. 
point between Ray and Serenity. The Danny stories is like that. And then also like the unity aspect, because remember the scripture pulling from God supernaturally gave them the the guys who made the tabernacle and stuff in Moses' time. He the Bible literally says God supernaturally gave them the ability to make everything directly, precisely according to the specifications of the tabernacle and how much cubits wide, how much cubits small. And the empowerment and, and unity aspect of it is taken from Kardashian's ability is taken from first peter 3 8 finally all of you have unity of mind sympathy brotherly love a tender heart and a humble mind and my goal with Kardashian is to like get his empowerment aspect to be like as iconic in like the superhero sphere even though it's like christian in the superhero sphere as iconic as to me my x-men which if you see the recent um x-men x-men 97 trailer that line is like is a puff uh, the fact that they included it in the trailer at the end to me, my x -Men. that is kind of like that is like the kind of leader one kadosh to um exemplify and kadosh like his you his personality and stuff is he's um he is a um he is not just because like Kadash, even though it is based off of the Hebrew word, even though because I put it directly in the reference, even though Kadash is based off of the Hebrew word holy, Kadash, Kadash is not just a personification of what it means to live a holy and set apart life. Kadash is also a personification of the collective, the explanations audience. These are the young adult Christians who are seeking industry standard alternatives that as Evan David describes it uh infused with the gospel to the fiction they decided to put away while being led by the conviction they have made it their goal to live as best as according to god's standard and love the word of god they don't just view it as an instruction book but as a source of encouragement edification and entertainment and despite and despise the very appearance of evil though not to the point they become stuck up over spiritual and unfound to be around so that's what like Kadosh is, Kadosh is like a personification of the viewers of um, the explanations audience through and through. And then from Kadosh, well, that is enough of Kadosh. That is enough of Kadosh. I can show you the next, one of the next ones who actually have some, um, who are going to do, going to be getting concept. At next four is um, Rafa. Then you have Rafa. Rafa, and this is like one of the more sentimental characters because Rafa is what well, I think we all know as Christians. Rafa is the Hebrew word for healer, and Rafa is actually based off of um, my younger sister. My younger sister is a hero. She, when my mom had um, stage three breast cancer in 20, her cancer journey was between um, 2018 to 20. 20 yeah 2018 to 2020 and uh, well she's alive thank god but from like going through the cancer journey with my mom and going to the hospital with my mom and stuff my sister from that and seeing the care of seeing the care of the nurses and stuff decided that she made a decision there and taking care of my mom decided that she wanted to go into the medical field and the thing with Rafa is that, because from my personal experience, especially from my personal experience through my mom, a lot of people like Jehovah Rafa means that God will like instantly heal. God will instantly heal you. 
or something like that. But I've seen that board rather than like instantly healing and drying up can cancer in my mom's in my mom's scenario, the amount of favor through the medical system that he provided is like it was mind blowing. Like like complete perspective shifting. So sometimes you're praying for sometimes people pray for God to instantly heal them or then they end up going down the sow seed for healing and those kind of televangelist nonsense and end up sowing away the um sewing away their thing. Because like for example with our with my mom's cancer journey, it, we literally didn't tell a lot of people because we didn't want the fake sympathy and everybody saying, Oh well, everybody coming to you with a word on like some people who do believe in chemotherapy because of um because God is a healer and those kind of those kind of stuff. I think you guys would I think it is how the blanketed those kind of um <laughs> those kind of stuff. And for us it was like no God provided throughout the entire journey, but we had to go through the entire journey from first chemotherapy all the way to radiation and all just the whole nine yards of a cancer journey. And from that perspective is why my sister is doing a nursing degree. She just started a nursing degree last year. And Rafa is her for set six years into the future as a 24, 26 year old. She's 19. And Rafa is set, 20, set when she's 26, 26 years old into the, um, into the future. When she, because she wants to have her own travel nurse business, that's her like life goal, one of her goals. And for me, like, that's like, but seeing my sister, how she handled it through, how she handled our mom through our cancer. Like, my sister was 13. Yeah, she was 13 at the time. And she was the one who, like, she, she would fight us to take care of, oh, to take care of my mom. It's like, she's, that she, she typed up a really nice, because when she got into the nursing school, they asked her, one of her first assignments was, why are you pursuing nursing? And she summarized it into a beautiful paragraph. And then she rephrased the um, paragraph last, this semester as well. She had to do another paragraph for another course and she re-summarized it. And from that was like, for me, seeing, for me, like going through the journey and then seeing how she, seeing my sister's walk in life and walk with God at the same time through it. It was like I wanna like pay homage to my sister in making her one of my main characters. So it's literally like the likeness is based directly off of my sister. She has like special she has like special requests for like if an artist was to draw her, she wants to be in her words, she wants to be a bit taller than she is because she is five two. So she wants to be taller and for her like when she's in battle mode to have um to have bantu knots as um because she says she doesn't she doesn't see much superheroes with bantu knots in battle mode so and that's what so rafa is based off of um based off of my sister and then her like armor is based off of um the hero ilari and you know, watch but a lot of like i use it as a point of reference not um inspiration and then one of the ones I think you uh, the fellas here would really like is um Naka. Naka is a hero word for Naka is a hero word for um for he's Naka is a hero word for strike and smite. And he is a, well, Corbin, you've been seeing um when we play mm -hmm. Five Gardens of David, Naka is based off of, of two of the characters from the Five Gardens of David game. On the sons of um, Zariah, which are Joab, Abishai, Ashiel. And if it need a brain job, Joab was the commander of David's army, the commander of the David, David's army, and he became commander of David's army through a bet David made. And uh, the thing with Naka, he takes inspiration, he, he is like base off of all three of the brothers. They were like, they were David's like real, real, real bad generals during that time. I actually did a there's an unsung Bible stories, um, but because I started my unsung Bible stories, and there is a thing for each one of I did a video for each one of the brothers, like breaking down their stories and the, the like lunacy of some of their stories. Like some of their stories, they won wars because God said we about to win this war, and the battle plan was like you, 
God said we were going to win this war, so we win in this war. <laughs> and Naka will personify that same kind of aspect, but just like Ashiel and Joab, he's arrogant. He's very, very arrogant. He believes in his abilities as God given, like God got us bro abilities, and he does get he does get himself into real, real problems throughout the story because he thinks that. He could run a fade on every single spiritual force of darkness or whatnot in his story. And he sometimes he's no thing about it, he's powerful in the sense that he nothing could really be could really beat him because his spiritual ability doesn't have, actually have a spiritual gift like the others. It, his only spiritual gift is that he has absolute control or mastery of every single spiritual weapon of warfare. But he doesn't have a spiritual like, yeah, his spiritual gift is that he could uh he has like a form of super speed akin to when El akin to Elijah. Elijah when um God gave gave Elijah super speed in the Bible, as well as the brothers. It a lot of the scriptures they were fast runners in battle, like nobody could have outrun them in battle. They sprinted ahead of um they just used to sprint ahead of everybody in battle. It said that in battle they were as fast as wild gazelles <laughs> running on the field all three of them they were like they nobody could nobody could have outrun them nobody could have catch up to them to the point that is how one of the brothers died because he was arrogant not listening believing he could run up and kill whoever was on the battlefield and he run up and that's how he died and then from him dying is how joab ended up getting disgraced because he wanted to avenge his brother when it was a time of peace and etc and then abishai was um i think you guys will know the scripture touch not touch not the lord's anointed that touch not the Lord's anointed scripture comes from um, Abishai. Because Abishai was the one when David, when they, they, when Saul was sleeping and they were like spying on Saul's camp, Abishai was like, yo, I, you know, you know me. I am the commander of your army. Let me, dude, like the sons of Zor. I have a, I have a three part series on all the, all the um, sons of Zariah put together. Where it like goes into each one one by um one by one. And all the scriptures related to them, like these guys are they are amazing. No problem, man. That's what this channel is about to help you guys strengthen your biblical knowledge with the unsung Bible stories. And just like the stories in the Bible that you wouldn't hear preached in a preached in a um in a Sunday in a Sunday sermon because it don't make like sense it wouldn't make sense there's no there's not much like application for it in a in a Sunday sermon that's the last of the videos I did on um, on some Bible stories that's planned on Saturday back so sons of Zariah Abishai Joab and Ashiel and he was the one where the term touch not the Lord's anointed because he was like I could pin Saul from here with one strike while he sleep they even have to blink twice like literally that was his that was his um that was his wooden <laughs> and David was like no it was the scripture you probably make some reference yeah scripture yeah Psalms twenty one I believe it was second Simon twenty one Oh, I missed I miss, I miss my reference. It's not Second Simon 21. Right, this is First Samuel 26. Then David said to him, like the Hittite, and to Job's brother Abishai, the son of Zariah, who will go down to, with me into the camp of Saul? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there lay Saul sleeping within the encampment, and with his spear stuck in the ground at his head. And Abner, and Abner, the army lay around him. Then said Abishai to David, God has given your enemy into your hand this day. Now let me pin him to the earth with one strike of the spear and I will not strike him twice. So Abishai was like, I could, I could take this man out in two twos. No, like, easy. You just had to give me the command. And David was like, no, dude, dude who, is, who is it that they could um, touch the Lord's anointed? But that man, he was like, he was, he was about that life. <laughs> he was about that life. And in the story, Joab is bold. Like, Joab is bold that life. Joab is the 
as I say, proof of reference, not source of inspiration for like how we just moved in battle. Is I don't know if you guys play Final Fantasy 15, but he dies that but he just moves on the he just moves on the battlefield with spiritual warfare. Everything is set within the spiritual realm. And he just moves on the battlefield, slicing through everything like butter. <laughs> like different weapons, multiple weapons. Every every single weapon in the book, he just just he just pull out and he just fight. Fight with. But the thing with him is that to balance him, because same thing with Joab. You have to go fast sometimes and slow sometimes. <laughs> to balance out Joab, he does not have um discernment. And for discernment, I can actually go to one of the I think one of the coolest, to me she's the coolest character that I made, like, this character came randomly one, uh, most of them was like reading through stories and stuff and seeing it, but Anya is the one that just like, I was walking home from the gym, just listening, there's this um Chinese, the well, Mandarin, Mandarin um, pop star, this is your view on spiritual, real or real. Virtual realm of world. I've heard of it, but never seen it. I think it is that um context. Because the Bible, like everything in the Bible points to the spiritual realm. Especially when it comes to like Jesus and things like that. Now, I do not believe in the um I don't mean no offense to anybody, but if I say like hyper charismatic um kind of spiritual realm, everything is about spiritual warfare, everything is a demon, it's a computer shutting down. Is a demon. I went to hyper charismatic church for a while. Recently, came out of a hype. Like, don't even want to go down talking about that. But I mean, like, they used to be I talk about the services and they that everything is a demon. So they would start the service praying for the mic system and telling the devil not to touch the mic system. And as somebody that was on the um, media team, the song team, I was like, the devil have nothing to do with this. Is the core that sparking in the back of the um sparking in the back of the um soundboard so stop rebuking the devil when the devil not touching the PA system and just go and buy a uh, XLR cord please <laughs> I think I don't know if any of you would like um need it but oh geez so you see that aspect of spiritual warfare no but the true yeah I <laughs> think yeah that aspect where everything is a demon and is buying and loose and this and bound the devil and all that is just like no 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 but most of the perspective of that because like everything in Adonai's arsenal is literally based in um in prayer because like the bible teaches us about spiritual warfare but spiritual warfare has been like for example whenever i look for like sources things i hear about spiritual warfare and like the scriptures they are counter commentary sources where it's like spiritual warfare in, like nowadays they start a song like Christian mythology and Christian myth. Like literally, it has become its own like subsection of Christian mythology. Like its own kind of Christian mythology. Because you're hearing like some of these stories and it's just like, what? It's just like, so, so this is like, for example, theology, the theology, the theology that believes Christians could have a demon and could be fully demon possessed and all that aspects. No, I don't want to go down that road tonight and go into that whole sort of things based like that kind of thing and like just that constant i just recently came out of um believing that aspect of theology and then like getting pop up, like hard red pill into like seeing the errors and that and just my own own um experience with certain things i literally put in my um in the in the um like the official thing document is that there is like it spiritual warfare drifts into what I personally describe as Looney Tunes level um Looney Tunes level conclusion, where it's just like this this is an example <laughs> uh, Bethel when they were doing spiritual warfare when they were doing spiritual warfare and they used the staff of Gandalf to stop the demon of racism. I don't know if you guys saw this. In a bid to end racism within Bethel and the Ecclesia movement whipped out a wizard staff. <laughs> there on stage, he led Bill Johnson and others to a ritual incantation to cast out the demon of racism by prophetically reincanting a scene from Lord of the Rings. No joke. 
call the opportunity a very powerful and prophetic act. Yeah, the prophetess recounts how she received a prophetic vision regarding a prophetic act saying, I'm going to ask us right to all grab a hold of this in our hand. Every single one of us, we are going to lift the staff and will command the spirit not only to leave, but he shall not pass. Yeah, man. Stating that the authority can only be released only be released by an apostolic decree they decree and declare that racism will end then as one fellowship they will take hold together and lift up the wizard staff and bang it on the podium shouting thou shalt not pass well pastor marlene got a prophetic vision right before this event and she saw us doing a prophetic act that was going to be very, very historic. One of the movies that has really touched my heart is Lord of the Rings. So I encourage you, if you haven't done this in the proper order, you must put oil in your door and then go in front and repeat this act with us. And Gandalf stands in his authority in front of the demon and says it. The first time he hits it and it doesn't happen. The second time Gandalf does it again and still the demon is not obeying. And at the third time, Gandalf puts both of his hands on the staff and he said, I said! And he hits it. And that authority is what we are talking about that can only be released by an apostolic decree. We decree and declare that racism will end, it's over in the ecclesia from this night forward in Jesus' mighty name. Just lift it up and bang it. <laughs> One more. We need you to agree with us. Thou shalt not pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see that kind of spiritual warfare? That is the kind of exempt from my from the Adonai's Arsenal series. That is that is that is nonsense. I think that's nonsense. That is nonsense. That is nonsense. That right there? Uh -uh. And did they stop racism? Because I mean this was at, that was during the height of um the George Floyd stuff in um 2020. Did they stop racism? Oh, I sure God and the angels are watching us like, what? I mean, nothing catches God by surprise, but I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure just like, nothing new under the sun, but sometimes it feels like we're operating with a new sun. This is some stopping. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Yeah, guys, so Corbin, if you have Discord, so again, ready to wrap up your stream. If you uh, have this, but I want to, if you, you could email me, the email for the channel is in the, in the, um, in, this is still there, or did YouTube have to do that? Yeah, you can email me at theexplanations.gmail.com. If you don't have any social media platform, you could get me on um, Instagram and I could link you the, or you could join the Discord. And I could, you could come and check out the um, the Adonai's Arsenal full full um concept thing. I drop it in the Discord, and I'll be dropping the rest of um like artwork and stuff as I get it in the um in the Discord. This is like a real cool piece from for the game that I'm making at the end of the year. My first Steam game. This is like something that the concept artist did, and then from that he went on to do. No, this is not this is for like for his own series. But from that he started to like just put together the uh I think I was showing you guys the other week. But this is like he started with an idea that he said could be cool to use for the um for the channel mascot. For the mascot, just like seeing what Adonis Arsenal was about. He made a concept character. Wait, 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 wait.
So he was making like a mascot for the channel that when I get um when I turn back or when I get back YouTube monetization, which should be by my I have some things to preliminary things to work on before I could be onboarded. When I saw that back out I put these put it on channel memberships and the um emotes and stuff and he was just like making a blanket character that could be used for like the mascot of the explanations. So you see, like he literally has the explanations, spiritual warfare, based in spiritual warfare, because he read the Adonis Arsenal thing, and put the um, explanations logo all over it. And then from like seeing it, I was like, yeah, I wanna turn this into my first official game. And you have like different concept art and stuff. But oh, jeez, that's the PSD logo. That's not what I wanted to do. Then. Like just putting together different artwork and different enemies like this is the wolf in sheep clothing enemy wolf in sheep clothing enemy and then some of the enemies I think that we make for this are uh, repurposing into my um, own comic series the Adonai's Arsenal comic series And to raise the argument that requiring and using a physical object in the spiritual warfare would disqualify that attempt, but I think the matter is Yeah, like for real. The for warfare. Yeah, new it shall yeah, it's the same thing, yeah. It's yeah, literally I say that's the same thing. Because to me the perspective of the series, I put that like heavily in the um for like a nice arsenal. I honestly believe like spiritual warfare is like I was surprised there aren't much people. Who have any kind of like um who are yeah olive oil and spiritual yeah fresh oils yeah especially in like this modern age because like people often use the the Old Testament context of it when it was under um the Mosaic law versus like with us now under the um New Covenant it is. So, for me, the perspective to it was, um, did I put it? Wait, I know it. I knew I put it. I knew it's there. It should be there. I'm surprised it's not there. Yes, it is there. Yeah, the perspective to Adonai's Asana, and I've write it, I've like literally finished the first script. Well, that's the abuse is really, yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. I finished the first, like, Full, full script for the first issue. First, full script for the first issue today, and then like looking to get it um, illustrated and stuff, and it's like put it together. Where I think the comic panels and thing should look like, and I would what I want the comic panels and they to look like with the character design concepts and everything that I, think, that I mentioned. So my goal is to have the first issue out at the end of this year. But the approach to it, as we wrap up, well, because I know this whole conversation started on spiritual warfare and other nice arsenal, and to just wrap it up, the approach to it, Corbin, for me, is that it's a fictional approach to what happens when Christians pray and worship. With spiritual warfare being a key aspect of the three different series that I want to work on, because that are connected to explanations, not all this year, like over the course of years. Um, most biblically accurate way of portraying it according to current brainstorming is through prayer and worship, particularly to fictionalize and reimagine what happens in the spiritual realm when Christians pray and worship. And throughout the document, you have seen illustrations taken from Steve Gould's Spiritual Warfare art collection, illustrating his interpretation on the armor of God and spiritual warfare, an interpretation that I hold personally from the way my mind visualizes certain Bible verses, various pieces of fictional media, and from being a Pentecostal Christian. However, from being a Pentecostal Christian, I cannot deny that fact that there has been what I describe personally as Looney Tunes level kung foolery when it comes to topics like deliverance, the overemphasis on human anointing and spiritual power over what God has says, everything bad is because of a demon, demon slain, and straight out error and butchering in the Bible verses about spiritual gifts and the authority God has given us over Satan and his forces, along with, along with many other topics. <laughs> many other topics but the perspectives of my like i the, the in in analyze arsenal it ain't gonna have nobody lifting and banging no um lifting and banging no staff in a physical realm to end the demon of 
racism. Hey, nah, 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 nah. Hey, ito yung nah, 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 nah. <laughs> But simply like, taking the perspective of praying in the physical world, praying physically has a direct, there's a direct action in the spiritual realm. Now, I'm not saying that that's how it is one-to-one in real life that every time you close your eye you become this massive spiritual warrior that is run through and jump kick demons or something no my series is fictional that is what my series is about that's not what real prayer and warfare is about this is a fictional approach thing 